Good morning and Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to our Shabbat morning service. This morning we will be calling up Rebecca Seltzer to the Torah as a bat mitzvah. We are also joined over Zoom by many other of your family and friends and members of the Kihila, members of our congregation for our Shabbat morning worship today. Um, for those of you who are joining us on Zoom, we can see you just fine. For those of us uh, who are in the sanctuary, we'll be praying together uh, with our Zoom call, of course, uh, up on the projector screen here at the front. The service as well is being projected, so you don't need any books or anything to hang on to. We can all see it uh, very well. So we'll have our opening song, Hine Matov, How Good It Is for Us to Be Together. Hine Matov Manayim Gam How good it is for us to be here together. Uh, and what it means to be together, of course, has changed quite a bit over the last uh, several months, hasn't it? Um, but nonetheless, we are joined um, both by those in person as well as those joining us over the internet for this very special Shabbat, for this very special Simcha, this joyous occasion uh, for our Shabbat morning prayer service as well as for Rebecca being called to the Torah a little bit later on. But right now, I'd like to invite forward to the Bima, your grandparents, Paul and Sandy, who are going to be presenting you, Rebecca, with your talit. The significance of a talit, I'm wearing one right now, um, are the fringes on the sides, what's called tzitzit. They're meant to be reminders of all the obligations, all of the commandments, all of the meets of both that are now upon you, Rebecca, as you are a bat mitzvah. You know, in the time before there was Alexa or Google Home or whatever it is that you use to, you know, set reminders, um, people needed things. So, you know, they'd write little messages on their hand or they, you know, might tie a little knot around their wrist. Um, this is the same idea. The idea was to look at all of these and think, honor my parents, keep Shabbat, and you know, on and on and on, do nice things, say please and thank you, you get the idea. Um, but by wearing these garments, we're reminded of our Jewish obligations. We're reminded of the mitzvot. And certainly as you are now a bat mitzvah, very appropriate for you to be presented with your first talit by your grandparents. Amen. For those who are joining us over Zoom, you'll notice that we have two cameras live at any time. Uh, in the sanctuary, one close up and one nice wide shot. So you're welcome to kind of 
see what we're doing with either camera. As we continue with our service now, we're going to have a blessing over tourist study. Uh, it's considered a wonderful thing for Jews to do, to study a little bit of Torah every single day. So it's part of the morning worship service to say blessing over Torah study. And Morgan is going to be leading us in the blessing. And then immediately after that, we do have a little bit of Torah that we're going to be learning, a reading, which is going to be done by Arlene Renfer. And Arlene, if you would lead us in our reading, please. These are things that are limitless, of which a person enjoys the fruit of the world, while the principle remains in the world to come. They are honoring one's father and mother, engaging in deeds of compassion, arriving early for study morning and evening, dealing graciously with guests, visiting the sick, providing for the wedding couple, accompanying the dead for burial, being devoted in prayer, and making peace among people. But the study of Torah encompasses them all. And now we have our formal call to worship, our, the beginning, the very formal beginning of the prayers. We studied a little bit of Torah, you had a talus, but now we're entering into the prayer service itself. So to get us into it, the prayer is called the Barhu, which is going to be led for us over Zoom by Morgan. Lie, 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 lie. In the beginning, even then, a new light was sown for the righteous, a promise that your light would become the catalyst, first for order and then for hope. 
author of Language and Light, help us to use words as you have, to cast light into dark waters and draw out justice and truth. Blessed are you, creator of lights. Amen. We continue now with the Shema. Shema. Please read with me. Standing on the parted shores of history, I still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands, marching together.
for Rebecca's speech now. I'd like to invite people to please rise. And Rebecca is going to be leading us in the Amidah, beginning with Avot Ve'imahot. Please read with me. On this Shabbat day, as you graciously receive our prayers, help us to hear your call. Grant us enough health to fulfill our duties and the compassion we need to attend to others. Teach us humility that we may perceive our own faults and grant us the wisdom to be forgiving of others. Give us the courage to be true to our highest selves and the charity to see the best in those around us. Give us patience enough not to become discouraged, hope enough to overcome all fears for the future, and faith enough to know your presence. O source of blessing, look with favor upon us. May our offerings be acceptable to you. We continue now with silent prayer. Please be seated. Battery went dead.
Okay, in just a moment, we're going to continue with the highlight of our service, which is the reading of the Torah. This is something that Rebecca has spent a long time working on, something that she spent a long time learning how to do, and it's certainly not easy. Uh, the Torah is written not only in another language, Hebrew, it's written in a sort of ancient Hebrew. There's no vowels, there's no punctuation. It's uh, more than a little bit tricky to learn how to do, but it is something that Rebecca has learned how to do. And during this time, she's really going to be our teacher. She's going to be our teacher of Torah. What that means is that not only is she going to read Torah to us, but she's also going to teach us all about it. She's going to teach us what it means. And in that way, she's really taking on, in the best tradition of benot mitzvah, in the best tradition of being about mitzvah, she's going to become our teacher, our teacher of Torah. Now, the Torah portion that she's going to be teaching today, which means both breathing from the scroll as well as she's prepared what's called a Devar Torah, a word of Torah or speech. Uh, the Torah portion that she's going to be teaching us about today is the Torah portion, Baha Lotecha. Um, for keen observers, you'll notice that um, that doesn't quite match up with today's date, um, but like pretty much every synagogue around the world uh, that's been affected by the pandemic, um, Rebecca is already a bat mitzvah, and she has been for several months now. To become a bat mitzvah means to hit a certain age, to hit 13 years of age. You don't have to do anything else, really, except be Jewish and 13. That being said, we've always understood this major transition, this major milestone, to be one that we now have the opportunity to exercise certain responsibilities. And those responsibilities include being both a student and teacher of Torah. And you became a bat mitzvah when the Torah portion was Baha Lotecha. And because of the pandemic, we are now able um, to give you this opportunity of teaching the Torah portion from when you became a bat mitzvah. So this is the right Torah portion for you to be teaching us as a bat mitzvah, um, even if it's a little different than what the calendar suggests uh, it otherwise might be today. But uh, you'll tell us more about Baha'u'llah. I don't want to go too, too much into it right now because, Rebecca, you're our teacher today, not me. We already have the Torah scroll already out on the reading table, set to the correct spot. The Yad, the pointer, is pointing to the very first word, so it'll hopefully uh, be easy enough for you to find it. But, um, but um, as we begin, I'd like to invite to the Bima people who are going to be having their first Aliyah as you read it. Um, so inviting those people to the Bima now, Zach and Paul Seltzer, Jeff, Nicole, and Josh Seltzer. I invite you to come to the Bima, and as you are making your way up, Morgan will lead us in a song, Al Shlosha Devarim.
Okay, for the first Aliyah, we have those who are now on the Bima, Zach and Paul Seltzer, Jeff Nicole, and Josh Seltzer. We invite you formally to the Torah. Rebecca, you should get up there too. You're reading Torah. Okay, Rebecca, have you found your spot yet? Okay, we invite forward your family. Ya'amdu mishpachat seltzer harishonit. And invite the family to lead us in the blessing before the Torah reading. Amen. And if your family would lead the blessing after the Torah reading, please. Okay, so Rebecca, one moment, please. So that was the first Aliyah, which means that Rebecca led us beautifully in the reading of the Torah scroll. But because other people were saying the blessing before and after the Torah reading, that meant that ultimately they were taking responsibility for that Torah reading, as it were. But the next Aliyah, Rebecca, you are going to both read the Torah, as you have already done, you're also going to be doing the blessing before and after. But before that happens, right before I formally invite you to the Torah, even though you're already there, but before I formally invite you to the Torah as a bat mitzvah, we have a tradition for your parents to offer you a blessing. This is um, something that if we were perhaps in a more traditional synagogue, would go something along the lines of, thank you, God, for releasing me from all the responsibilities that I have as a parent over this child. And you can imagine how happy of an occasion this would be for parents. It's the origin behind the bat mitzvah party, perhaps. Um, we do things a little bit differently here. Um, but nonetheless, it is a time of blessing um, from your parents. And this is a blessing that they'll be giving to you Rebecca. So I'd like to now offer um, the opportunity to your parents, Jeff and Nicole, to recite the parents' blessing. It's already on the table. Our hearts are one on this Jewish day as you commit yourself to a life of Torah. 
a life, we pray, filled with wisdom, caring, and right action. We pray that you will grow each day in compassion for the needy, in concern for the stranger, in love of all people. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Rachel, and Leah, bless you on you becoming a bar mitzvah. May you grow with strength and courage, with vision and sensitivity, and may you always be certain of our love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And now, Rebecca, we formally invite you to the Torah. Ta'amot hakala habat mitzvah rifka bat moishe leib v'chana hashenit. Baruch anai hamvarach le'olam va'ed. Amen. 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 Okay, Rebecca, I invite you to close up that Torah scroll now. You can place that orange Torah cover, the mantle, right on top of it. Uh, your parents are going to stay up, but everyone else uh, is welcome to return to your seats at this time. And for the very next thing, uh, Morgan is going to be leading us in a special prayer called the Shehechianu. This is a prayer that we say anytime we've been looking forward to something and the moment finally arrives. Um, so certainly there's been a lot of anticipation and excitement over uh, finally getting to this time. Um, so we thank God for giving us life, for sustaining us, and for bringing us to this day. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Shehechianu v'kimanu v'hegianu Lazman hazeh Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Shehechianu v'kimanu v'hegianu Lazman hazeh
Amen. And now for the translation of the Torah reading. Uh, the translation is going to be read for us by your dad, by Jeff. But Moses said, the people who are with me, 600,000 foot soldiers, yet you say, I will give them enough meat to eat for a whole month. Could enough flocks and herds be slaughtered to suffice them? Or could all the fish of the sea be gathered for them to suffice them? And the eternal answered Moses, is there a limit to the eternal's power? You shall soon see whether what I have said happens to you or not. Moses went out and reported the words of the eternal to the people. He gathered 70 of the people's elders and stationed them around the tent. Then after coming down in a cloud and speaking to him, the eternal drew upon the spirit that was on him and put it upon the 70 representative elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they spoke in ecstasy, but did not continue. Two of the representatives, one named Eldad and the other Medad, had remained in camp, yet the spirit rested upon them. They were among those recorded, but they had not gone out to the tent, and they spoke in ecstasy in the camp. Okay, thank you, Jeff. And now with our Torah scroll still out, um, we offer one of our most heartfelt prayers, which is a prayer for healing for anybody who is not well people who are sick, and sadly there's plenty of them these days, um, as well as those who are injured, and we pray for their healing and for their well-being. So if anybody would like to offer a name, uh, if you're in the room, um, you're welcome to speak it out loud. If you are over Zoom, I invite you to, uh, if you'd like, to share their name in the chat box. Um, and then together as a congregation, as one congregation, both in person and online, we will pray for their healing and for their well-being. Okay, for those whose names have been mentioned, for those who are in our hearts, for all those who are ill or injured, uh, especially with this pandemic, we pray for their healing and for their well being. We say, May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal all those who are not well. God, Bless them with a refuah shlema, a complete healing, a refuah ta nefesh, a healing of the spirit, a refuah ta guf, and the healing of the body. God, be with them. Be with those who love them, and be with those who provide care for them. Baruch atadonai, rofeha cholim, blessed are you, God, healer of the sick. Together we say, Amen. And please. Join us now in our song for healing, Mishaberach. Okay, next up is going to be the Haftarah. 
So I invite you, Rebecca, to return to your podium. Uh, your mom can join you as well. And Rebecca is going to be doing the blessings before and after the Haftarah. She's going to be reciting the Haftarah for us as well. And uh, not only that, but uh, your mom's going to be reading the translation for us. So please. Amen. Yeshua Koach. Nicole, please. Then I said to the angel who had been talking with me, what are these, my Lord? And the angel who had been talking with me answered, saying, don't you know what these things are? No, my Lord, I do not, I said. Then he explained to me, saying, this is the word of the eternal to the Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the God of heaven's hosts. What are you, you great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. He shall bring out the topmost stone, and seeing it, all shall cry, beautiful, beautiful. to you as well, Nicole. Thank you very much. We are going to continue now with prayers for our congregation for our country, and for the state of Israel. We begin by inviting your dad back to the Bima, Jeff, who is going to be leaving us in our prayer for our congregation. Source of all being, May the children of this community learn these passions from us. Love of the Torah, devotion and prayer, and support of the needy. May we guide with integrity, and may our leadership be in your service. May, th may those who teach and nourish us be blessed with satisfaction, and may we appreciate their time and their devotion. 
Bless us with the fruits of wisdom and understanding, and may our efforts bring fulfillment and joy. Baruch Ata Adonai, Sheotcha Levadcha, Bira Naavod. We continue now with our prayer for our country, led for us by Robert Rosenthal. O guardian of life and liberty, may our nation always merit your protection. Teach us to give thanks for what we have by sharing it with those who are in need. Keep our eyes open to the wonders of creation and alert to the care of the earth. May we never be lazy in the work of peace. May we honor those who have died in defense of our ideals. Grant our leaders wisdom and forbearance. May they govern with justice and compassion. Help us all to appreciate one another and to respect the many years that we may serve you. May our homes be safe from affliction and strife and our country be sound in body and spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And now for the state of Israel, our prayer will be led for us by Nancy Packard. O heavenly one, protector and redeemer of Israel, bless the state of Israel, which marks the dawning of hope for all who seek peace. Shield it beneath the wings of your love. Spread over it the canopy of your peace. Send your light and truth to all who lead and advise, guiding them with your good counsel. Establish peace in the land, and fullness of joy for all who dwell there. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And now it is time for Rebecca to teach us a bit more about that Torah portion and the Haftarah that she read for us. Rebecca, please. My Torah portion is Vacha Elocha, is taken from the Book of Numbers. In it, God says to Moses that he shall not bear the burden of leading the Jews alone. You need help. Two people stepped up for the challenge. Their names were Eldad and Medad. They were prophets. Moses assigned Joshua th uh, through thought that Eldad and Medad were stealing Moses' thunder as a leader. However, Moses was okay with with it because he knew he could not lead by himself. He needed help. As the saying goes, there is no I in team. In order to accomplish your goal as a leader, you need lots of help to get to make it that happen. As a scout, I sometimes have to lead meetings. I do not do it alone by myself. I ask for help from my fellow scouts to get the job done. As fat, it's it is more fast and efficient that way. My Haftarah is based on the prophet Zechariah. He returned with others to Israel after the Babylonians had conquered Jerusalem and destroyed the city and temple. Zechariah told the Jewish governor to lead the rebuilding of the temple, not with a strength or power but through God's will, will alone. Although the city and temple were destroyed, the army and people were not big enough to rebuild. There are examples of the spirit of God speaking to important people before they could begin the rebuilding of the temple. I think sometimes you must work hard, your, work hard on your own or get or with help to finish the task. Sometimes, however, you can work really hard and still not accomplish accomplish a task. It may be out of your hands. My bat mitzvah and my brother's eagle project are two examples of this. Both of these were huge jobs and my brother and I both had lots of help to get the job done. But when COVID-19 took place, it it did not matter how hard we worked or how much help we had. We just had to trust that 
in time it would be accomplished. I would like to thank thank you. I'd like to say thank you to Rabbi Holtz, Miss Jeffin, for all the time that they helped spent that they spent with me, helping me with my Hebrew to make sure I was progressing as I worked towards my bat mitzvah. Thank you to my parents who helped me prepare for today. Thank you to my uncle who made my awesome invitations, who remade, who, who remade them when my bat mitzvah was postponed. Thank you to all. Thank you to all my friends and family that are here today to summer, to support me on my special accomplishment. Rebecca, thank you so much for sharing those words of Torah with us. Uh, I'd like to invite forward now your parents who are going to offer a few words of their own. So leading up to this, bat mitzvah, we had a lot of things that were very unexpected, like a total postponement of your bat mitzvah due to COVID. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's been a lot of work getting ready for this day and questioning whether this day would, you know, actually take place. Um, but we're really proud of how hard you worked, even though there was disappointment with it being postponed. Um, even though there was frustration with maybe having to continue to practice Hebrew leading up to this day. Um, so, you know, a lot of things that were unexpected that we didn't count on. Um, but there were some things that were expected. Um, for instance, your bat mitzvah or your, I'm sorry, your mitzvah project. Um, you know, Children that are going through the process typically take on a project that is something that they, it maybe is kind of near and dear to their heart. And so it was not a surprise when you chose to work with animals um, who are very close to your heart. I don't think Rebecca's ever come across an animal that she dislikes, um, whether it be frogs and snakes or large animals or things like kitties and puppies. Um, so when you chose to work with animals, it was not surprising. Um, because one, you're compassionate and caring about animals, um, which as you've worked towards this day um, and as you've grown, because obviously you are already 13. So as you've grown and become a young lady, as they say, um, you've really shown us, not just the animals, but you've shown your parents and your friends and um, scouts and family, how caring and compassionate you are just as a, as a human. So we're very proud of all of the work that you've done leading up to this day. And I just want to say you did a, <laughs> a wonderful job, great job. I know it's been stressful for you and, and for us, but you, you did it. Um, and we love you very much. Thank you, Nicole and Jeff for sharing those words with us as well. Next up is going to be your teacher, Ms. Streffen, who's got a few things to say as well. I do. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> um, I look forward to our weekly lessons. Yes, to hear your Hebrew, but also every single time you had a huge smile and it lifted me no matter what was going on in your life, you still had the smile, what was going on in the world even though I heard what your parents just said about what was going on in the house, uh, every time, and even with the change, you did all of that from my perspective with grace and beauty. And that means the world, which is wonderful. Um, and I have some gifts for you, which Rabbi will hand eventually. Uh, they are the book on the doorpost of your house from the congregation from the sisterhood, a set of candlesticks, and from the brotherhood, a kiddush cup, mazel tov. <laughs> yes, 
we have them all, so don't leave today without collecting them. Okay. And also for you, there we go. How's this? Okay, good. Also for you is a certificate that you saw a little bit earlier. There's actually another one in here. I'll start with that. So first up, we'll talk about the certificates. First certificate for you, Rebecca, is this one right here. It's actually a gift certificate for $250 so that one day, post-pandemic and when you're in high school, which should coincide, I hope, um, you will be able to redeem this towards a peer trip to Israel with um, our North American youth groups. So $250 gift certificate presented to Rebecca Seltzer in honor of you becoming a bat mitzvah. The Union for Reform Judaism Youth and TKC are honored to present this certificate for travel to Israel on a nifty high school summer or semester program. Okay, that's number one. I was telling you about this certificate as we signed it before the service today. This says bat mitzvah certificate, teudat bat mitzvah. It says Rebecca Lynn Seltzer, Rivka bat Moshe Leib, the Hana was called to the Torah as a bat mitzvah on December 19th, 2020, which is the fourth day of the Hebrew month of Tvet in the year 5781. You read the Torah portion, Baha Lotecha, in the presence of Temple Kilat Chaim in Roswell, Georgia. It says in becoming a bat mitzvah, Rebecca has accepted the privileges and responsibilities of being a Jew, lifelong Torah study and the keeping of mitzvot, Shabbat, holy day, and life cycle observances, participation in the life of the synagogue, the Jewish community, and Israel, and dedication to tikkun olam, improving our world. Um, and then you signed it. So we've got it well documented right here, all the commitments that you have made. Uh, you've signed it, and it was witnessed and agreed to as well by your parents and by me. So I told you before, I still have my certificate framed and hanging on my wall in my office. Um, so this is something for you to keep. It's actually uh, beautifully decorated with the stained glass windows of this sanctuary, too. It's the border of the certificate. So you can't get one of these anywhere but TKC. It's very special. Um, but frame it, keep it, hang on to it. It'll be a reminder for the rest of your life of, uh, of this day, and not just really this day, but all the things that led up to it, all the things to prepare. Okay, so that's the presentation of the certificates. Let me um, echo what we've already heard a bit from your parents, from Ms. Streffen as well. I had the great honor of being your teacher, mostly last year, but a little bit this year as well. And, you know, Ms. Treffin's right. Your parents are absolutely right. Uh, it's been wonderful to teach you. You've always arrived with a smile on your face, with, you know, to be a cheerful presence within the classroom. And every time we've had a chance to meet with you, a wonderful member of the classroom community of Temple Kilat's, uh, Temple Kilat Chaim's community as well. Um, your love of animals is wonderful. Uh, people in the room know, I'm not sure if people uh, on Zoom can see, but we've got um, these handmade uh, kipot with lots and lots of dogs on it, which is pretty cool. Your mom made these. Uh, and I was telling her before, I've been a rabbi for 10 and a half years now. I've never been to a bat mitzvah where there's been handmade custom kipot like this. So that's pretty cool. And I think I see on your mask a bunch of paw prints. Is that right? You know, I got to stay six feet away, so I can't get too, too close to look at it and admire. But uh, that's really, really neat. You know, when we talk about service and we talk about meets vote and commandments, you know, sometimes people, the first thing they hear when I say community services, oh, I've got to go pick up trash off the side of the street, which is important and for people who do that. Thank you very much. We love clean streets. But there's so many different ways to give back to your community. There's so many different ways to be of service to the community that you live in. 
So whether it's helping with animals like you love to do, you know, this could be a real passion. Um, there's nothing wrong with taking our own interests and our own passions and then finding a way to use those interests and those passions and those skills to then give back. It's something that you do with animals in, in your own way, something that your brother did with his Eagle Scout project here at TKC as well, uh, for which we're thankful. Um, and you come from, you yourself do service, and you come from a family of people who are of service to the community around them, which is so wonderful. And I would say that as you are now a bat mitzvah, you know, this is something that we say, we're just starting you down the path, or you're just beginning. Being a bat mitzvah is not an end. It's not an end of a process. It's the start of the next stage. And so as you enter into this next stage, this stage of you as a bat mitzvah, may you be blessed along your way. And speaking of blessings, I'd like to offer you one of my own now. Not actually my words, but it'll come from me. The words are from the, Torah, from the Torah itself. These words were first said by Aaron, the brother of Moses, the first high priest of Israel. A blessing that he gave to all Israelites as they were moving from Egypt to the promised land. It's often a blessing given to an entire congregation or to an entire community. But today, as you've been called to the Torah's about mitzvah, it's my privilege to offer this blessing to you. May God bless you and keep you. May God enlighten you and may God be gracious to you. May God's face be lifted up to you and may God grant you the blessings of peace. Can you hear our tone? So may it be God's will. Together we all say, Amen. Okay. Um, I think that's, we're, we're good on speeches now <laughs> for, for a little while anyways. We're going to, we're going to continue back with our service now as we prepare to say the Mourner's Kaddish. Our thoughts turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, and those of every race and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. As we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss, of life and death. And I invite you now to please rise. This week, we remember those who have died recently, including Klaus Rees, husband of Lauren and father of Lucas. We also remember Elaine Brin, stepmother of Chuck, mother-in-law of Eileen, and grandmother of Corey and Jody, as well as those who have died at this time in years past, including Harold Dorschau, Richard S. Feinberg, Jim Gleason, Marion Pearlberg, Elizabeth Bauer, Charles Manis, Frida Rubel, Oscar Dreisen, Abner S. Harkavy, Mark Amsterdam, Bessie Butler, Beth McComer, Vivian Bader, Esther Goldberg, Elizabeth Mann, Nancy Schlesinger, Stephen Gary Bush, Sanford Gerstel, Jim Greenhill, and Saul Morris. And if anybody else is remembering somebody, somebody who passed away recently or somebody who passed away at this time in years past, if you're with us in person, you're welcome to share their name with us out loud. If you're joining us over Zoom, I invite you to uh, put their name in the chat box if you are comfortable with that. But we do take this opportunity now if anybody would like to um, add to our list. We continue now with Warner's Kaddish. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei raba the alma divra chirute v'amlich malchute v'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chayeh dechol beit Yisrael 
ba'agala uvizman kariv ve'imru, amen. Yehe sheme raba mevarach le'olam alme almaya, yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitbar v'yitromam v'yitnase, v'yitadar v'yitale v'yitalal sheme dekudusha v'richu. Berchu. Le'ela min kol birchata v'shirata, tushbechata v'nechemata. Damiran the Alma the Imru Amen. Yehe Shlama Raba Min Shemaya the Chaim Alenu the Kol Yisrael the Imru Amen. O se Shalom Bim Ramav, who ya ase Shalom Alenu the Kol Yisrael the Imru Amen. Please be seated. Our closing song is O Javo Shalom Alenu, Peace Will Yet Come Upon Us. O Javo Shalom Alenu, O Javo Shalom Alenu, O Javo Shalom Alenu, Et Akulam. O Javo Shalom Alenu, O Javo Shalom Alenu, O Javo Shalom. 